A famous explorer once said that the extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. I'd finally set out to make my mark, to find adventure. But instead, adventure found me. Hi, I'm Tim Travis of Xbox Reviews and Verdicts, and today I'm reviewing Tomb Raider from Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix. Lara Croft hasn't exactly been on top of the world this console generation. Sure, her last retail outings were fairly well received, and she had a successful Xbox Live Arcade game, but she just couldn't keep up with a new wave of action titles that were truly breaking new ground. Once a gaming and pop culture icon, Lara has been in desperate need of a franchise reboot and Crystal Dynamics is here to deliver an experience that seeks to change how we perceive her forever. So what's the verdict on Tomb Raider? Let's find out. You can do it, Laura. After all, you're a Croft. I don't think I'm that kind of Croft. Sure you are. You just don't know it yet. Crystal Dynamics wastes no time with exposition. Lara is shipwrecked on an island south of Japan. It's up to her and a band of fellow survivors to find out what the hell is wrong with the island and escape before the island's crazed inhabitants do something about it. The game's events will transform Lara from a timid college student to a rugged survivor. Upfront exposition probably would have gone a long way to give us a reason to care about Lara right from the get-go, but it makes up for it enough as the story progresses. You'll feel about Lara in a similar way you would with Isaac Clark. Clark from Dead Space. She's simply not having a good time. The supporting cast isn't bad at all, but you won't be rooting for them like you will with Lara. Since the game doesn't have any exposition, you won't immediately know much about these characters' motivations or maybe even why Lara cares for them. But the game divulges information about them as the game goes on, often through old camcorder footage, but again, upfront exposition could have been far more effective. But overall, this is a successful origin story that shows us what Lara will look like for the foreseeable future. This is a younger but far more serious and mature Lara and the game is much better for it. The voice acting really sells it. Camilla Luddington's performance of Lara is incredibly believable. I'll take this new Survivor Lara over the old sex symbol Lara any day of the week. One minor complaint is that there is a slight disconnect between how she's portrayed in cutscenes versus gameplay. An early sequence is Lara's first kill. It's a truly shocking scene that shows death ain't pretty and seems emotionally difficult for this young adventurer. But this is immediately followed by gameplay where where you kill plenty of the island's locals with ease. It's somewhat jarring, but at the same time, it only reinforces the fact she has to adapt to survive. And this never became a nagging issue as the game went on. The Tomb Raider staples are here. Platforming, shooting, and puzzle solving all make an appearance and they've been updated for the modern age. The platforming is death-defying but accessible, and the gunplay is solid. Shotguns feel especially powerful. <laughs> Puzzles aren't as prevalent as the former elements and are generally confined to bite-sized optional tombs. A new flair to Tomb Raider is the addition of a Metroidvania-like structure. You will regularly obtain new gear that will allow you to access new areas. Climbing axes let you scale craggy surfaces, shotguns blow away barricades, and rope arrows let you shimmy to otherwise hard to reach areas. These tools are fun to use, but the structure is nowhere near as dramatic as other Metroidvania titles since these tools are only there to get you from one mission to the next, and not to reach hidden collectibles. There is a basic leveling structure that can increase Lara's survivability or combat effectiveness, which can make already brutal combat even more so. <laughs> You get XP for just about anything you do in the game. Killing enemies, hunting animals, raiding tombs, etc. But by collecting salvage, you can also upgrade your weapons. These upgrades are not only helpful, but they also change the look of your weapons, which is a cool touch. Where the game really shines is in its set piece moments, and there are plenty of them. Escaping a burning building, climbing across a bridge while a fellow survivor snipes enemies from afar, running away from a crashing plane, these are some of the most action-packed gaming sequences I've ever seen scene. This stuff is definitely a lot more impressive than the game's many quick time events. Even stealth makes a regular appearance. These moments are scripted in a way to be very cinematic and accessible. The bow, Lara's signature weapon, gets the greatest amount of use here. Stay here. I'll check it out. 
A nice touch is that Lara gets behind objects to break her enemy's line of sight automatically, which in turn creates a very seamless cover system in firefights. It doesn't hurt that this game looks as good as it plays. It might not be at the very top of the pack visually, but it matches just about anything else that's come out over the last few months. The vistas look fantastic, the art style is awesome, and Lara is lovingly animated. This game can also get pretty disturbing at times. I swear, this game can look like Cannibal Corpse album art at times. But of course, this game revels in the insane action spectacle. Everything around you will be falling apart and this game still runs without a hitch. What some players might find underwhelming is the general lack of difficulty. Combat isn't terribly challenging on the normal difficulty, but Crystal Dynamics is not in the business of wasting your time with a single player. The game might not be the most challenging out there, but that only helps the gameplay keep up with the story's pacing. Optional tombs are generally a breeze, but it fits with the fact that the game doesn't want to halt your progress. The set piece moments are some of the best I've ever seen and play seamlessly. Maybe these moments aren't terribly challenging, but they are thrilling, impressive, and very fun. If there's one game available on the Xbox that can make you feel like you're part of a blockbuster action movie, it's Tomb Raider. You can go ahead and throw all of these compliments out the window for Tomb Raider's multiplayer offering. It's simply not much fun. The gameplay doesn't feel right for a competitive setting, starting weapons are underpowered, 10 second respawn delays are dated in this day and age, and the maps are sometimes too big for the 8 player cap, leading to sometimes lengthy amounts of time between kills. There is a host of unlocks, but it doesn't matter if the overall experience is unexciting. Multiplayer doesn't even make much sense in a Tomb Raider game. Wasn't it Lara Croft that made this property cool and exciting and not frivolous features like this? Just saying. After the single player game is over, there may or may not be a lot to do depending on what kind of player you are. If you absolutely have to scour the game of all its collectibles, you can return to the island and do so. But again, the equipment you've acquired won't get much use in doing this, which is too bad because a metroidvania structure really could have shined in the post game. Your upgrades also won't get much use here since there are no enemies around to use them against. This highlights the fact that the game really could have used a new game plus mode, but the main game is fun enough that you'll be tempted to play the game all over again on a higher difficulty. Lara Croft has earned herself an overall solid reboot. Nitpicks about a lack of a new game plus mode or an underwhelming metroidvania structure aside, the single player is just plain fun and keeps your interest high throughout the experience. Plus the conclusion is satisfying and effectively sets up more games without resorting to a cliffhanger. The multiplayer is to say the least unnecessary and damages the complete product, but when all I want to do is start a new game over from the beginning, it's easy to tell this series is now on the right track. Thanks for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel, and I hope you enjoy my future videos.